Hi folks, today I'm going to show you my ESP 8266-12E OLED clock IoT. As you can see here I've got an ESP 8266 module, uh, 12E, and it works really nice. You can just plug your USB cord right into it. Um, I've also got an OLED display over there, yellow blue. And I just wanted to test that thing out. I haven't used it before, so uh, I got it working, but wanted to create a little application, uh, so I created this clock. And you can see right here, it's showing the uh, date and time on the OLED display and on the web page here. And on the OLED display, uh, it's got the IP address for the web page that we want to access, which is right here. And uh, we've got some settings we can change. It's also showing the serial output over here. But right now I've got it on Pacific time. I'm going to go ahead and make some changes here. And let's see what uh, the time is in Caracas. You can see over here in the serial data that it did an update. That's 5 o'clock p.m. And we're going to go ahead and uh, try someplace else. Let's try Tehran. And see what we get. So it's five, one o'clock in the morning, in Toronto. Ah, and the next day. So you can see that the date changed, the time change, and uh, that's by time zone. Let's go back to Pacific time here, and see what we get. And we are back to 1:31 p.m. I'm gonna try 24-hour time just to show you that. And if we did daylight savings time, it would uh, jump forward an hour. But, uh, let's see how that works. And right now, it's going to access the time server every 30 seconds. Of course, when you click submit, it forces a time server update. Um, now we've got uh, current time with daylight savings applied. Of course, it's not daylight savings right now. And uh, turn it on back. So that's basically how the web page works, and you can see the serial output. Um, occasionally, if it has trouble getting the time, it will obviously not update the time. It's only a problem when you first start it up. Once it gets the time once, it'll continue to uh, use the last update, so to speak. Anyways, uh, I'll go ahead and show you the code now and how that works, give you an idea of how these form uh, inputs are working and the AJAX. Alright, now I'm going to go over the code for this sketch. I use the Arduino IDE to do my ESP8266 programming. Um, I've got another video that you can watch. I'll post a link to it here. Uh, that will help you get set up with the Arduino IDE if you want to use that to program the ESP. Alright, so there's just some comments that kind of briefly describe uh, what the sketch does and how it works. Um, here's a bunch of libraries you're definitely going to want to include. And I will post a link to download this code, uh, including the libraries, all from GitHub. Uh, so just keep your eyes peeled on this video. You should see a link to download this sketch. Uh, in the meantime, you could just copy it off of here or just wait for the download link. Alright, these are just some uh, properties for your Wi-Fi. This is the name of a properties file we're going to use that will allow us to save uh, values so that every time we restart the uh, ESP, if the power goes off or something like that, it will read those values and pick up where it left off. All right, some more variables are UTC offset, used for time zones, uh, some things we use for our timer, and some other time-related intervals and, and web-related intervals. I'm <coughs> sorry, variables. All right, so I'm just going to go keep on moving down past these, some of these uh, variables and constants until we get down to our first function. And this is some of our time functions. Now I got these from some other scripts I found online. 
Uh, this is basically sends out a packet uh, to an NTP server. And down here, see where that function is being called. Sends that packet out, uh, receives the information, hopefully. If not, prints this out. If it does, it takes that information, breaks it down, and sets the time. All right, so now we're going to get down to this HTML function. Get dropdown, and this is just the HTML used to create the time zone dropdown. And as you can see, I'm going to go through this. It's a lot of HTML, which is why I separated it into its own function. And it has all sorts of, uh, you know, has some code in here to determine whether or not it should be selected in the list, which is important, uh, you know, just to reset the proper variables. And there we go. So now this is the AJAX code. This is just a little JavaScript that's put in the head tag uh, of the web page uh, that's al allowing you to do an AJAX call and it's updating a div called time div. And as we go down here, you'll see that div because here's that function call and it's in the head. And here's the actual div that uh, is being uh, changed anytime there's a Ajax call. Uh, and here's that drop-down list. This is where we're going to put the drop-down and some of this other HTML I didn't break it out because it was short and easy to put in there. Uh, for example, the checkboxes and the text box, as you can see here. So this is just uh, filling in the HTML, writing it all out and filling in the proper variables uh, for the different options. And of course, it's a form, which is important because we're going to be uh, submitting this form and storing these variables in these file functions. So we have update properties. This is where the actual properties file uh, gets updated. So when you click submit, it will get the variables that are currently uh, in use and write them to the file. And here's the initialized prop file. This gets called. Uh, basically every time you start the script up and it's going to read the options from the file uh, if it doesn't find the file it's going to do an update and it's going to update the properties to actually basically create the file now if there is a file it just reads the data from the file and updates the variables so that's how you can save um, information to a file to be used after the power goes out or something like that um, should help you uh, in other applications and uh, we get down to the client handlers well actually is valid number this is just a little error checking that we do based on that text area box we don't want people to enter uh, anything that's not a number so handle submit when you click the submit it's going to go through this and it's going to check all the variables and here it's actually doing that error checking for the interval grabs those uh, that information and takes it down here and we do an update property so it basically sets these global variables so that when update properties is called it takes those variables and puts it in the file and we're going to do another set date time just to force a time update due to the submit call, the submit button there. And handle time. Now this is what the Ajax is calling every time. Uh, it's going to call the web server and this is what the web server is going to respond with, just a small little line of text. And you could actually call the URL of this and it would uh, just give you that text. Handle root, that's just the base when you first go to the website, uh, it's just going to print out the HTML. Now we get up to our normal setup routine with some ser get the serial started. And it's basically setting up the display and, and a little bit more serial information, getting connected. Once your Wi Fi is connected, we start up the UDP so that we can do the time server calls. And we set up our handlers for the client. And we're going to do our first set date time. This is going to call the time server, set the date. And if it fails the first time, sometimes it takes a little extra time. 
Uh, we're going to do it again just to make sure we get that date set right off the bat. And as we go through the loop, it's going to check the interval. Say if it's 60 seconds, every 60 seconds it's going to set the date time. It's going to call that time server, reset the time, and on it goes. And this just happens every second, depending on the delay that I've set at the bottom here, I'll show you. And this is just determining if it's 24 hour time or not, and setting up the time string appropriately. And same thing down here, we're setting up the date string. So it sets up the time string and the date string. And here's the delay for one second because we want to uh, have our display over here updated every second, the OLED display. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to go back over it a little bit uh, slowly, going back up. In case you uh, miss something, you can go ahead and uh, write it down. Let's start from the top and just flip through it really quickly. Uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed uh, my video. It should at least give you an example of how to get the time and uh, set the time so that you can use it throughout your application. Maybe you're doing some data logging or something like that and need to know what the date and time is. And it should also give you an example of how to use uh, form variables, form functions like input, text area, uh, checkboxes, drop down lists that should give you an example on how to use those things so that you can use them in your own code. And of course, uh, last but not least, it's also giving you an example of Ajax. And uh, typically I wouldn't make an Ajax call every second because that is basically going to generate a lot of web traffic. And um, depending on how much uh, HTML or data is being responded, it could be it could take a while. And if you're doing it every second, it's uh, it's just not going to work. It might work sometimes, but it's not going to work all the time. So I'd recommend if you're going to do AJAX calls, except for in this particular instance, I would at least you know give it five or ten seconds uh, before each call. Uh, in this particular situation it works out okay uh, basically because we're not really requesting that much data it's just the date and the time um, basically some text a little text string anyway so I hope you can use this code on your own and uh, check out my other videos thanks